Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video we're looking at the TFC9979, a landing craft from Star Wars. And this thing is bloody huge. If I zoom out with the free camera, that is the starting little ice patch next to the Easy Star Earth base, which is right there. So there is one hell of a difference between those two in sheer size. And it gets even worse once we go inside the landing craft because there are large vehicles stored within it. So that's all going to be very fun when we get around to it. So zooming back in, I'm going to take control of my character and we're going to go around the outside to have a little look-see. There are mods involved with this as all listed on the workshop page. Some of them off the top of my head are the Star Wars weapons so you get the cool little laser effects and those sound effects that go with it and hover engines and stuff which are used for the vehicles inside. So this is the front of the landing craft. We have the little entrance, which is right down there, which will open up nicely, but I'll show you that in just a second. We've got some nice little detail around the outside. We have the big cannons on top. As we come across to the wings, we then have more cannons on the outside, which can rotate and fire if you want them to. Around the back, we have another wing. And then we have the engines, which are rather fantastic. So these things, if I get close enough, are not actually engines. They are simply display screens with the windows in front of them. They give a nice little effect if you get close to them. Unfortunately, I did have to turn down the settings on my game in order to get this running smoothly. So there was no point in me having the engines on because you wouldn't be able to see them unless I was point blank in front of them. So coming down underneath the wings, we have more detail. On the actual main body, again, we have more detail, but nothing too much standing out in terms of functionality. And just for a size comparison, if I come down, sit next to the entrance, and then zoom out, it's, it's gigantic. But right, how do we get inside it, you ask? Well, we're going to need to get inside because we can't open that up from the outside, or at least I haven't found a way to open it up from the outside. So flying around the side of the main body, we will have a little door. This door has already been opened because I've already came through here. So opening and closing that and all that. And this is the main body. There are signs around the place telling you where to go. So I was to come through here. We have the airlocks and we have the bridge. The airlocks of course of how we got out. And these little doors over here don't lead anywhere. They are just a decorative. So through here, we have the medical bays on both sides. We then have the storage container and an air vent and a button which will turn off the air vent if you want to turn it off and not to waste any ice. And of course some more decorative doors. Coming back through here, we have two doors. They both lead to the exact same place which is the bridge but I'm going to come back to that a little bit later on. What we're going to do is go down below. So down here, we then have a secondary door and now we're in the main little vehicle bay. I say little vehicle bay, if I was to just zoom out with my character like that, it's not little at all. It's very large, in fact, to get these vehicles all in here. So we've got some tanks. we got, I think that's a transport ship. I don't know Star Wars, so I can't tell you the proper name. So do correct me if I am very wrong with that. But they are all attached to the ship via the connectors down here. So what I should explain before I go any further is the landing craft itself does have landing gear. However, if you press the traditional button of P to undo the landing gear, you will also unlock all the connectors on the ship, which means if you were taking off, all these vehicles will become loose and will probably damage themselves and damage your ship while you try and fly. There is a dedicated button to undo the parking brakes of the landing gear, so you don't disconnect these. But if you did want to disconnect them, we come over to these little panels over here, which you can just click it, and it'll release it and allow you to fly it. But I'll come back to that tank in just a moment because we do have this little entrance ramp. So we've got, of course, ways to go to the upper deck if we want to, which is, I believe, the way we came in. And then all the way across here, we then have this ramp. We get an alarm, the ramp goes down, and that allows our vehicles to go out. It is a little bit confusing if I just bring up the ramp again. You do have to reverse down this corridor, get to the other side, let the ramp go down via the sensors, and then you go out the front door. Over on the opposite side, there isn't too much going on here. We can't access the hangar doors, and we do have these cargo containers if we want to access them, although there's nothing in it. 
dropping down the side of where the ramp came up. We then have another little ramp. So that would then come down to there and connect itself onto this little bit here. And then if I come down a little bit further, we have some more control panels. So this over here, if I press this, is going to open up the front. So this moves forwards. And then it opens up, flying out and turning around. The little ramp comes down. The hangar door parts on the front come out. And this allows your vehicles to go in and out. If you want to get more cargo on it, if you want to fit other vehicles on, this is how you come in and out. You can control this all from the main cockpit because that's how I'm going to close it up. So all the way up to the top, let's take a vehicle out for a little spin. Turn around. All the way through here. It is rather magnificent. I do like how the lighting works in this game. L that little glow that goes with it. It does add some unique effects to the interior of certain ships. So we come over to this little tank thing. I can't remember its proper name, but they were fun in the original Star Wars Battlefront 2. In here, we're going to crouch to get inside. We have some little bits of detail on there, so a little LCD screen on that for us to look at. We've got that to look at. On the HUD itself, we've got the tank gun. We've got a turret lock, which allows it to turn around on that. We then got the Starship Laser Cannon, which is the Star Wars laser. Then we've got the gyroscopes. We've got a timer block for the gyroscopes. We then got the main hatchway, which is the way we came in. And then the stuff for the hover engine. So if I was to go to third person and then press number six, that will go up. If I was to press number eight, this will then raise me off the ground. It is a little bit wonky. Hover engines are a little bit weird in this game. It's not like Imperion where they just work. So you do have to get used to it in this. So what I'm going to do is come over to here. Turn myself around. Like so. And then reverse. If I was to turn the free camera around, and then reverse like that. In first person, unfortunately, you cannot see anything. There's a nice display there, but it doesn't work. So this would be either a free camera job, or if you don't want to use third person view, you will need to have a second person to tell you where you're going. So very carefully moving this backwards. It is a little bit wobbly. Do remember to move the mouse up and down because hover engines will have a tendency to tip over like that. I'm just going to hop out. Or not, the actual things have activated themselves. So pressing number six, turning around, that is now activated. So I can come back into the hover ship. Just going to raise myself a little bit more off the ground. And now it's time to go forwards very carefully because this thing can go quite fast down here. And we don't want to be damaging the landing craft nor the tank. Otherwise, that defeats the purpose of having vehicles inside it. Nice and silky smooth down. And out we go. Now that we're out, we can pump up the hover engines even more. And we're out in the open. Marvellous, isn't it? So testing the weapons, we have, of course, the tank cannon, which has a nice little reloading thing on the screen. And then pressing number three, we have the Star Wars lasers. If I turn the tank around, which is very hard to do, come around. And then we're going to shoot the landing craft. So, boom. I'm not actually sure what I just hit there. I think I might have hit myself. Nope. Shooting that. And then we got them. The Star Wars lasers are very powerful, by the way. They absolutely shred through everything. But let's press number six. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> that doesn't sound good at all. No, I want to get out. No. What is happening? Help. Help! And now we're on the bridge. We have some seats around here which currently do nothing. You could set it up to take remote control of the vehicles in the vehicle bay if you wanted. Or perhaps take control of the guns around the ship. That's up to you. And then this seat over here is the main control seat. This is once again like the seats over there and it does nothing. So pressing F we have some options. We have the Heavy red turbo lasers, if I was to come over here and fire. That's what they do. We then have a rotor, which is for the guns on the side. But I'm going to put that back. We then have number four, which is how we're going to close up this little ramp down here. 
Hopefully it still works after shooting it. There we go, that's closed. Number 8 is how we unlock the landing gear, not pressing P. And number 9 is for the thrusters, pressing them on. We should now have the yellow little... These should glow yellow, but like I said, my settings have been toned down in order to get this working. So, pressing spacebar to get things started, and then pressing 8. We're going to very slowly take off the ground. This thing is heavy, so it's going to take a long time to get yourself in the air. Bear that in mind if you're trying to escape something, because they'll probably shoot you down before you get anywhere. Although this thing is absolutely tough. I did do a recording before which fails, but this thing can crash and still be okay. Come on. I don't think I can get high enough. It's going to be a tree again, isn't it? Nope, I've hit the ground a little bit. But that has made me go quite high in the air. I've taken a tree with me. This tree is now mine. But now comes the important test of every video. How does it crash? Tilting myself down. And here we go. So while I'm going to crash, as usual, it will be in the description below. If you want to download it and try it yourself, do be aware that there are a lot of blocks on this. So if you have a low end system, it's going to be very difficult to get this into a playable state. But here we go. Like I said, the ship is just a little bit bigger than the starting base. And I think that's it. So pressing F to get out. Jetpack on. The game is going in slow motion because it's struggling a bit with how it's going to handle all the blocks. Down we come. The lovely sound of blocks breaking is always music to my ears. Unless of course it's a ship that I spent a long time building and then it's not. I'm going to need to turn myself around. We're going to come to the airlocks. Out the door. And let's see the damage that has been done. Oh, that lucky ship. So close. But yeah, like I said, it's very solid ship. It just seems to destroy everything around it due to the sheer blocks on it. There is the landing ramp. Still usable. Maybe. And yeah, it just ripped a massive hole through the starting base. So anyway, thank you all for watching. And I'll be back with another Space Engineers video probably on Monday. Bye bye.